Our next guest and his company are working to bridge the digital divide. 2.6 billion people worldwide are not connected to the internet. Think about that number for just a second. Verizon co-founded the Edison Alliance back in 2021. It works with partners to bring digital access to things like healthcare, education, and financial services in more than 100 countries. Well, last week, the initiative reached its goal of helping more than a billion people around the globe one year ahead of target. CEOs like when that happens. Only on CBS Mornings, we're joined by Hans Vesberg. He is chairman and CEO of Verizon and chairman of the Edison Alliance. Good morning to you, Mr. Vesberg. Good morning. Thank you, you for here. having me. Great to be here. This Lovely. Is, this is good news. I want to get to the Edison Alliance, yeah. but we want to start with news a day because of what's happening with Hurricane Helene. I know Verizon is very much involved. What are you all doing? So first of all, this is such a devastating hurricane and impacting so much and so many people. And I saw the numbers of fatalities is just enormous. But communication is so vital yes. in these moments. First of all, that you can communicate with your friends, family, but also for the public safety. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the re recovery and yeah. for the rescue. Uh, so so what did we you are, guys get ahead of it? So we are, we are actually, first of all, we build our network very robust. So actually we have very few of our towers in a hurricane going down. They are so hardly robust. And then we move in generators and batteries way ahead because mm -hmm. the biggest failure usually of the network communication is the commercial power is going mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. But also our employees, our engineers are going into the hurricane before it comes ah. because you cannot come into the area and try to fix the radios or and the power if you're not inside so that's what we do we have so thousands of do you have a timeline there. hans on when it will be restored it's i would say, say florida now is pretty much restored uh, i think georgia and alabama very little impact in certain areas of course tennessee and carolinas is a really hard especially when it comes to the power. The commercial power is really hard. I mean, we saw the pictures in the morning here. To get power is really hard in this time. So that's gonna take some time, but usually with all the satellite communication we're using as well, we're getting communication out very, very quickly okay. with our teams. Let's talk about the Edison Alliance, because I know that's your baby. What was your thinking when you started it? So I worked with the sort of the Dig the Levide for 20 years, I've seen communities in Africa being co connected and I see the difference in their eyes when they are part of our society. And I think that in, in the 20, 21st century, I mean, it shouldn't matter where you're born, where you live, where you come from to be connected. So that's when we came out from COVID, we all saw that if you couldn't work, you couldn't do healthcare, you couldn't do education where you're not connected. I decided together with World Economic Forum to gather all the companies and countries in the world that wanted to help mm -hmm. to connect one billion people. Mm -hmm. But only, not only to having broadband, because that's not enough. You need to have either digital education, healthcare, or being able to do mobile money or digital payments, because that's our essential. So we set out the goal of connecting one billion people in those three areas. And we actually passed 1 billion people here in September this year, a little bit more than a year ahead of the target. But we had the biggest companies in the world involved. We had 127 countries. So it was public, pu public, pu private uh, yeah. partnership that was extremely important to solve big problems. Together. Yeah. So I see you're doing your part, and as Gail mentioned, the number of people without internet access. What more can be done? So think about, regardless in which country you live, there are three challenges to being connected. Accessibility to the technology, broadband, affordability, and usability. Mm. And every country has all three problems. Accessibility is less of a problem in the developed world because there are broadband. Affordability exist in any country in the world. Because it's not only to be connected to the yeah. service, it's also a device. If you're gonna do education, yeah. you need a, a, a laptop or something like and that. If you don't have the resources. Exactly. And then finally, usability, meaning it has to exist a digital education curriculum, yeah. digital healthcare, the hospitals need to be doing it, or the, the government allows uh, financial, meaning mobile money and payment right. digitally. Yeah. So you need to attack them all three locally. So, and any country have the problems. Bringing it back to this country, I'm tempted to ask you why I can't get internet up in my bedroom. Do you think the kids are unplugging the router? <laughs> <laughs> but I'll leave it there. Yeah. Uh, but I want to ask about That's the, a uh, very particular issue you have in your home. <laughs> yes. uh, That's on you, Tony. Yeah. Uh, they're definitely unplugging the router. But rural okay. Americans, uh, what's being done to make sure you get that final mile built? Uh, the final mile is going now quite, pretty quickly right now because we do we do actually wireless broadband, the last mile where it's very rural. And that we're doing quickly here and seeing that we can cover as much, many as possible. 
The main challenge has been in the US actually the affordability. And you might remember there was a program called ACP. 20 million US citizens had a subsidized service fee every year, which now is not there. So even that is here. And then usability, the states need to build digital healthcare, digital education, uh, etc. So it's the same challenges in every country. It doesn't really matter where you are. All right, right. Hans Vestberg, thank you so much. We appreciate you Since you're you here us. though, Hans, is there anything you can do to make the Verizon bill easier to read? <laughs> it's not that phone bill. Is it just me? No, it's got all kinds of breakdowns yes. and extra this, that, and the other thing. I just thing. want to know how much uh, I owe. Gail, that sounds like a particular problem. <laughs> okay. yeah. But we're working on that as we're well. We're working on that as we're well. We're going to fix Gail. Hans, we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you.